question for this evening is, good evening, everyone. I will do our invocation and pledge. Our invocation for this evening is, if it is to be, it begins with me. And I think that is such a beautiful quote. I don't know who the author is. I didn't even think to look it up. But what I gather from that is all of us have passions. There's something that we're passionate about. I don't care if it's football or gardening or helping others. There's something that you're passionate about. Maybe it's book reading. But if there is truly something that you're passionate about, something that you want to see differently or want to see done, then it has to begin with you. And I'm just taking that stance and I'm encouraging everyone else to take the same stance. When we think about Toastmasters and when we think about getting new members and working our path and doing our speeches, if truly being better leaders and being better public speakers is your goal, is your passion, then it should be. If it is to be, then it should, it must begin with me. That is my invocation. And if you would please place your hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, States of America. and to the Republic America for which it stands, and one nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. And back to you, Maurice, our Toastmaster. Okay, I'll let Olivia continue with her other roles. Yes. Good evening, everyone. I am also, this evening, I am your grammarian, our counter, and I will be giving you the word of the day. The role of the grammarian is I will be listening during the speeches and evaluations for misuse of the English language. I will notate those and give a report at the end. I will also, during the speeches and evaluations, be listening to those filler words like I am, a uh, so, you know, like, those words that we can use sometimes when we should just take a necessary pause to gather or change our thoughts or topics. I will give a report at the end. And our word of the day is conflate. Combine two or more texts or ideas into one. Urban crisis conflates a number of different economic and social issues. Back to you, Maurice Toastmaster. All right, thank you. The timer for this evening will be Carrie. Good evening, everyone. I am your timer today. My role is to time your speech. We have prepared speech, not a long speech. It is wonderful, five to seven minute speech. Okay, green. <laughs> you see this green at five minutes, yellow at six minutes, red, actually pink at seven minutes, and time to wrap up your speech. We have a table topic, it's the one to two minute speech. You see, no, 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 no. green at one minute. Yellow at one and thirty one minute and thirty second. Pink at two minute and time to wrap your speech. Thank you. All right, thanks, Carrie. And our general evaluator for this evening will be Donovan. Yes, thank you, Maurice. My role for this evening is a general, general evaluator role. My job is to be able to, to keep track of the time, basically, to see if we started on time. And at the end, I'll report on when we, um, like how many, how much recess we had and see um, the, when we finished as well. My other job is to call upon my evaluation team. My evaluation team is the, is the timer, the all counter, and Grammarian, and the first evaluator, the speech evaluator as well. And they'll give their reports and 
I will conclude, and then I will make sure that come back to the man in charge, man or woman in charge. Thank you, and back to you, Maurice. All right, and last but not least, our table topics master for tonight will be Cheyenne. Hello, everyone. I'll be doing our table topics. You'll get an improv question. And I might just call on you just to, just to uh, make sure we have everyone volunteer tonight. So we'll look forward to those. As Carrie said, they'll be one to two minutes. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Cheyenne. And without further ado, we'll go to the next part of our program, which is our prepared speech. And our prepared speech will be given by Wes. Wes will be given a pathway, will be given a pathways presentation mastery level one presentation. It will be the second speech in the evaluation and feedback project. And will be five to seven minutes in length. And without further ado, I will relinquish the lecture turn to Wes. In high school, you may have read the story, The Mystery of Reading You See. It's about two Norwegian explorers who traveled by balloon from Norway to the Greek island of the Iranian Sea and the adventures they encountered on that island and on their way back. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, I have reason to suspect that there is more fact to that story than fiction. You remember, if you read the story, The Mystery of Iranian You See, that when the two explorers arrived on the island, after they explored, they, they came across this cavern. And deep within this cavern, they found this cache of ancient scrolls. Now, they spent several days preparing those scrolls for the eventual return to Norway. They were staging those strolls in a protected area near the balloon. During this entire time that they were there, they were experiencing tremors on that island. And their adventure on the island culminated with the, a major earthquake. The main character was in the gondola of the, of the balloon, preparing for the launch. The, his assistant was had the scrolls and he transferred them by an arm load to the main character who grabbed them and was about to prepare to the to sew them for safety. Then the, then the assistant boarded the gondola and cast off the anchor line. Unfortunately, what happened when the balloon lifted up? All the scrolls that the main character had in his arms were dumped overboard. Desperately, the main character grabbed for one of those scrolls, but it was ripped from his hand. Eventually, the, the two men made it back as far as the English coast. Their balloon met with bad weather. They crashed into the English Channel, but were picked up by English fishermen. And then they made their way back to Norway. Some years ago, I was in Tromsø, Norway, and I visited the Norwegian Museum of Exploration and Antiquity. That home, that museum was actually the family home of Professor Eric Starnari. He was not only an author, but he was an explorer and adventurer and inventor. In a glass case in this, in the room that was a study in that museum, there's a map or a illustration of a balloon. It's an elongated balloon attached lengthly to a boom. Protruding from the size of that balloon are sail-like structures operated by a system of levers and pulleys. In the center of the gondola was a chamber surrounded by solar mirrors, 
which would heat up a substance within the chamber, cause the air to rise and inflate the balloon. That sketch exactly, exactly matched the sketch of the illustration that was in the story, The Mystery of Reading and Seeing. What's more curious, on a wall in a picture frame is a piece of fabric, fabric like material. I looked at that material and it contained Greek lettering. I took a picture of that. Right here. The question I have is, what is contained in that, that fabric? Or what is that fabric? Could it be that when that, you remember the story when the main character grabbed for that scroll and was dripped from his hand? Was there anything in his hand? Could that material be the only shred of evidence of one of those ancient scrolls? If that's the case, that could give new meaning to the mystery of a reading you see. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you, Wes, for that speech. And now at this time, we'll move on to the next portion of the meeting, which is our table topics. And our table topics master for this evening will be Cheyenne. Hello, Wes, I like that speech. I, I wanna read that story now. And so I'm gonna have to look that up to read or audiobook it. So thank you. All right, so we got a few minutes. So I will ask, I will close my eyes and point to a random person on my screen and whoever that is, you get the question. So, all right, Miss Carrie, this question is for you. Are you one to ask a lot of questions or do you just use the information you already have? And that can be any task, work, school, whatever you feel. Good evening, everyone. I rather to use the multiple or a lot of information, not just one particular instruction from a particular person, because I have a great skill to generalize and I have a great skill to apply one into a lot of situation. If I have a more, I have I easily generalize and get the average of the all of the instruction. And what's the best for me and do this because sometimes average is good to start with. If someone said this, 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 okay, this is the average line. And then let me try it first. And if it doesn't work, probably try this way or this way, or just to adjust it a little bit and find out the best, the best for me. So I prefer the not just one or a particular. Um, so this is what I really like. When I saw that um, I have a, I have a friend of, I have a good friend of mine who is nurse. She told me that when she is an inter still internship student, she went to multiple hospital, not just one or two, probably I would say at least four, five, six when she was a still college student. I thought that was very good idea because I learned from different doctors, nurses, some other lot of health providers in different location, different hospital, different clinics. And she learned very only one skill, or one particular task, but see the multiple different viewpoints and she can learn it and she find a way, she, her own way. So that's what I basically do. Thank you, back to you. Awesome, thank you so much. I am the same way. I probably get on people's nerves because I will ask for clarification because if I just wing it with what like vague information, I'm gonna mess it up and I like to save time and just be able to uh, get it done the first time. All right. All right, Donovan, do you have a skill, talent or hobby now that you were unable to do last year? So have you learned something new in the last year? Thank you, Cheyenne and all guests. 
Um, my question was, have I learned anything new the past year, basically? I would probably would say yes and no. Like, you know, sometimes time flies and you can't always keep track of what you have done. Yes, because I've learned that I able to help out with um, a different type of team because I'm an intern now and I gain more skills by doing the internship, by learning how to, to maintain different facilities like the batting cages in the field, how to set things up the right way. It, it might be challenging at some points, but that's why we have, that's why we learn these things is to be able to, to gain that knowledge, but also being able to use that knowledge to apply it to other scenarios and situations that you might be in. If you're not in that, if you're not in that, um, just that specific area. So I would, so long, so believe it or not, that, 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 um, so if we um, cut down my, if, So the short version is that yes, I I have gained more knowledge and more things as well. Thank you. Back to you. Awesome. Thank you, Donovan. Yeah, I try to learn something new every day and hopefully pick up new skills along the way. So all right, Maurice, this last one is gonna be for you. All right, what is one skill or knowledge that you have that you would be able to teach someone else. Okay, fellow Toastmasters honored guests, what is a knowledge or skill that I have obtained that I could pass on to someone else? Hmm. Okay, not to take too much time, <laughs> failing to think about it. I will just say learning how to research, learning how to better research specific things on the internet. And I do have some skills that maybe a lot of people know and maybe a lot of people don't know, but there are several places on the internet besides the search engines where you can go to, to be able to research new things that you haven't learned before or, or just learned. Um, and some of those places on it on the internet and, and some of the skills that I've obtained, you can conflate them together to <laughs> be able to better use them. And that is my skill that I have learned over the years that I could teach someone else. Thank you, Madam Topic Master. Thank you, Maurice. I feel like you're saying that Facebook articles or statuses may not be a reliable research uh, material, but we'll agree to disagree. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or Reddit, Reddit counts. For okay, I'm guilty of that one. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right, guys. So this has been a fun table topics. I said that I was picking randomly, but I wasn't. I just wanted to hear y'all's answers. So <laughs> that makes me feel better now. But um, I will pass it back to our test master and we'll see you guys next time. All right. Thank you. We're at the next portion of our meeting, which is the evaluation period. And I will relinquish the lectern to our general evaluator for this evening, which is Donovan. Thank you, Maurice. And 
in front of Toastmasters. Um, I evaluated that the meeting went well. We did start it a little bit late. We, it was five minutes that we were a little late. We started at seven, six. seven of six. six. Sorry. We um, started around seven of four that I, that I saw. The actual meeting, we kind of saw the actual meeting around seven of four because of the time and stuff. So I would say that the meeting went well, and I would, I would also, um, I would also write down when we in the meeting as well, so we can um, keep track of the actual time, the time flow through the meeting. And then now my next job, which I'm going to conflate to be able to with everybody else as well. As First, I would like to call upon the first evaluator for Western speech. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters. And I don't think we have any guests tonight, but greetings, fellow Toastmasters. Uh, tonight, I'll be evaluating Wes's speech. So, Wes, I, I really enjoyed this speech. It's really interesting. Um, I like the subject matter and I like how you sort of tie everything together and sort of towards the end it's it's like it's like the I guess the because when you start the speech off I feel like it's the story is like a fictional story and I'm like oh, okay this is an interesting fictional story and then when you kind of tie it into the museum and it's like oh this is you know something that's really happened you know there's proof of this story that I really enjoy that that's always um you know, just kind of like balancing, you know, like a, a novel with reality is always something that is going to be interesting to me. So I sent you your evaluation in email form. I'm having trouble writing on the PDF. So it's kind of like the key. So you could just transpose the answers onto that. Um, but it's just an email form. So you excelled at, um, I put down um, telling a, a detailed story that kept the audience interested, engaged, and engaged. Everyone here was paying attention. They're interested. They're listening. And I know the more detailed you get, it can sometimes be harder to keep people. Like even if it's really interesting, it's hard to keep people's attention. But you manage to find that that good balance of giving lots of detail so that the end of the story pays off, but also doing it in a way that keeps people interested. So I like that a lot. And you you also excelled at. Um, just like your your vocal uh, inflections, like you you look excited when you were talking about the story. Uh, I really appreciated that. Um, you may want to work on. So this criticism is more related to Zoom. Like you probably wouldn't have this in in real life, but in a Zoom situation, if you have a room that maybe has a little bit better acoustics. It was kind of echoey um, from like, I get, I get, I'm assuming you're in like an office or something like that. Um, but if you had like a room with uh, something else in it to make it a little echoey, I know it's, that's hard to control, but then just to give you, there were a couple of times when I had a hard time hearing you could just cause the background was kind of echoey. Um, I don't know of a good solution for that other than if you were in like with a room with maybe some more furniture or something. But like I said, that's that's only going to be an issue that you deal with in the Zoom realm. You know, in, in real life, when you're actually giving a speech, obviously you won't have to worry about that. Um, but but that kind of echo combined with the quality of the Zoom audio, there were a few times I had a little bit of trouble um, hearing you. But like I said, that's of course is no fault of your own. So to challenge yourself, um, I really liked that you had the. Um, the image of the uh, of, of like the of the doc of the, the scroll that that the, the main character had had ripped a piece of, and I enjoyed being able to see that. If you in the future, if you had more images, that would be really cool. Like if you had like I know there's a part where you're describing the the hot air balloon. It would have been really interesting if you had like a picture of that that drawing that you're referring to or or something similar. Uh, something that would kind of, you know, offer a little bit of context for that. That would be great. 
then if possible, if you could do a couple of, um, if you could do them like a PowerPoint on the Zoom screen, that would be great too, or if you could share it, because then that way you would kind of get like a clear picture. So again, that's really just a criticism that that applies to Zoom. That, so like you wouldn't really have to worry about that otherwise. So as far as the, um, the numbered score goes, uh, clarity, I gave you a three. You, you were very clear, but it, sometimes it was hard to, to hear with the, um, the background noise. Um, vocal variety, I did a four, like you were very expressive. So that was fantastic. Uh, gestures, I did a four. You get, you would, as you told the story, you're very animated. Um, audience awareness, I gave you a four as well, because like I was, I was saying earlier, you, you did a fantastic job of balancing like, you know, the amount of detail you're giving and also telling a story that keeps people engaged. And you were very, you have to be very aware to do that. You did a fantastic job. Uh, comfort level, I gave you a five because every time you give a speech, like you seem very, very comfortable. And I appreciate that about you. You seem like you really enjoy giving the speech. Some people kind of, they get up there and they're a little excited or they're a little nervous and they're like, I just got to get through this. I just got to, I just wanted to be over with. Whereas when you get up there, I can tell you're very comfortable. You know, you know what you're going to say and you, you enjoy delivering it. So I, I appreciate that about you. So I gave you a five on that. Uh, interest, I gave you a five. Super, super interesting topic. Um, you balance a lot of cool stuff uh, together in that speech. And then for applied feedback, I gave you a five. I don't remember everything that you were um, evaluated on the first time you gave this speech. I remembered a couple things, but I noticed the things that I did remember, you took the time, you took that, into account and you use that this time. So I gave you a five on that. So overall, it was a fantastic speech. I really enjoyed it. The only thing that I think was holding me back was just probably technology and, and Zoom, which is totally fine. You know, we've all dealt with that at some point in time, uh, especially especially over this year. It's, you know, we're, we're all kind of, it, it's, it's all, we're all still kind of dealing with it. But overall, Everything was great. I thoroughly enjoyed the speech and I can't wait to hear the next one from you. So with that, I give it back to the general evaluator. Thank you, Carol. That was a, a um, very interesting and yeah, enjoyable evaluation of a speech, which was awesome. The next, the next evaluator Evaluator, I would like to call upon Mr. Timer. Kerry, would you please give your report, please? Thank you, Donovan, General Evaluator. Good evening, everyone. Let's start with long speech, five minutes and 11 seconds. My short speech, table topic speech, one minute and 56 seconds. Donovan, you have uh, two minutes and 14 seconds. Maurice, one minute and 28 seconds. Kyler, your evaluation is five minutes and 40 seconds. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Carrie. The next person I like, the next evaluator I would like to call upon is the all counter. Olivia, would you please give your all counter report and your Gamillion says that code site, well, says it conflates together. Hey, you took my my use of the word of the day. I was just going to say, if you don't mind, I'll conflate the two topics. So I'm still going to give myself credit for it, though. <laughs> yes. So as I begin my evaluation, I will start with the misuse of the English language. Wes, Carrie, Maurice, Donovan, I, I did not, Kyler, your evaluation. I did not catch any misuse of the English language, so very good for that. Let's conflict this topic and with that of an R counter. Donovan, you had one R in your table topic response. And Maurice, for the first time since 2018, I heard an R from you. What in the world? But you know, you really had a hard question. So I could see how 
I could tell you were scrambling to come up with an answer. So, but that's the first time I've ever, in all the years that I have known you, ever heard you use a filler word. So I almost hate that this is being recorded. Just delete that part, Maurice. You still did great. No records broken here. Uh, Kyla, you had you started off very, very good. I think as you were trying to go on into the close to the end of your evaluation of Wes's speech your arms kind of started to pile up. So you had a little over about 10 or so, so not too, too bad. And your, you knows you had two. You had no likes. So you know, it used to be one of your favorite phrases, I think. So you've come a long ways with the you know. So congratulations on that. And the souls and the likes, none of those were there. You had a couple arms, but again, it, it is hard when you're trying to evaluate someone. You want to be, I guess the word I'm looking for is you want to be honest and open, but at the same time, you want to choose your words carefully because you don't want to offend anybody, yet you want to give a proper evaluation because without it, there's no way the person can grow or learn. So very good job on your general, I'm sorry, on your evaluation of Wes's speech. And I think that is it for me. I will pass. Oh, and the use of the word of the day, Maurice. One, Donovan, two, and Olivia, two. Does anybody else use the word of the day, conflate? Okay, back to you, general evaluator, Donovan. Thank you, Olivia, for your point. Actually, this is the, um, the ending point for me. So I thought that the meeting went well and I enjoyed was a speech. It was very um, interesting to learn about the uh, history of the um, story about the squirrels. I thought that was kind of interesting. And I'd like to conclude by saying that we did have a great meeting and I enjoyed I enjoyed it um, to this point. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and relinquish the lectern back to the Toastmaster of the evening. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Donovan. I don't think there are any awards tonight. So we'll go into our educational overview. And I believe that educational overview is going to be presented by Donovan. Thank you, Maurice, and on and fellow Toastmasters. Um, I don't know if y'all know, but today is actually is actually Ronald Down Syndrome Day. So something that I want to share with y'all is a little brief bio on what what Ronald Down Syndrome Day is. World Down Syndrome Day is marked each year on March 21st, beginning in 2006. The 24th day of March, the third month of the year, was selected to signify the uniqueness of the triplication of the 24th chromosome, which causes Down Syndrome, aka trisomy. Every year on March 21st, World Down Syndrome Day is observed to create awareness about Down Syndrome. It is a condition in which a child is born with an extra trifles chromosome. Some countries um, actually terminate people who do have that, who actually do have that type of disability, which is kind of sad. Down syndrome is a naturally occurring chromosomal arrangement that has always been a part of the human condition. Being universally present across racial, gender, or socioeconomic lines, and approximately one in 800 live births. Although there is a 
there is considerable variation worldwide. Down syndrome usually causes varying degrees of intellectual and physical disability and associated medical issues. The United Nations really sets the theme for commemoration of World Down Syndrome Day. Theme of WDSD 2022 is inclusion means. This theme illustrates that we should make efforts to include the people affected with Down syndrome or disabilities in all modes of life. That does not mean that's bad. That means it could be good too. We must not discriminate the people having Down syndrome or any disabilities. And this is, um, I want to, um, to um, credit the, the um, National Down syndrome Society for accrediting this, this, um, this information. Thank you. And I'd like to relinquish the back on back, I guess, back to the Toastmaster. And then he'll, he'll um, transition that to um, the active president of the meeting. All right. Thank you, Donovan. Uh, at this time, I will relinquish the lectern back to the president. Good evening again, everyone. Thank you. I think we had a great meeting. We did start a little late, like Tom has said, but we're eating early, so that gives us a few minutes to not only pick our roles for next week, but to nudge your neighbor and encourage them to do a speech maybe next week. And also, I think I have a thing for us. So unless someone else has anything else they want to go over, could we take a few moments to go over our roles for next week? Anybody itching to do a role? Oh, Wes, I see your hand up. Carrie, I sent you a message. Did you see it? Carrie? Did you see the yeah. message I sent you? Uh, um, no, actually. A little hard to see the message from my. Oh no, 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 no! I sent you a message. It was from uh, Brandon, and it was, I sent you a text. The okay. uh, the next competition will be April the 9th. Okay. He's working to get all the times and people lined up. April the 9th. I'm pretty sure it's probably on a Saturday. I'll take a look at my calendar and see. Yes, it is Saturday. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much. Very welcome. Mr. West. You are on mute. Well, part, part of the level one project of the, is, is for me to give an evaluation. So I encourage somebody to give a speech, I'd be happy to give a, the, uh, be an evaluator for the speech. Um, I, I have a few other things I'd like to say, if I may. Uh, number one, I was trying to, did, did you see me on full screen when I was giving the presentation or did you just see a little, little, little part of the gallery? That depends on the person's view. You can change your view to be speaker view or gallery view. Well, I, I changed the speaker view, but did, all, all, no. all, all, I, all I saw in the large screen was Maurice's picture. I didn't see mine at all. I, I, I just saw the little gallery view. Did you, did you see all me in full screen or did you just, just, just a little? I changed no, the person must change their own device. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Am I a little static here? Yeah, so your device will only show what you want it to show. So each person must change. Like right now, I'm looking at gallery view, but right now when I click on speaker view, 
then I just see whoever's talking. Okay, well, I, 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 I clicked on speaker view, but I, I only saw it in, in, the, in the large picture. I saw only Maurice the whole time. Hmm. And also, I, when, when I tried to pin carry, uh, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, all I saw was carry. I couldn't uh, pin myself to see how I was doing. I, I, it was, uh, well, it's just one of those things, just one of those things, that's all. I have to learn about it a little more. Also, uh, the, 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 the presentation I gave was totally fictitious, but I did draw from actual real life examples. I did know a gentleman by the name of Stein Are in Norway, and he was kind of an adventurer. He was my paragliding instructor. We, we, uh, we, we attached ourselves to a paraglide and jumped off the side of a mountain together. Fortunately, the wing or the, the canopy opened and functioned well. So that was kind of an adventure. But the, the, this might sound like a tall tale, but it, our, our fiction, but it's absolutely true. He knew, he knew that I was a skydiver. That, that, that normally was a 75 or equivalent of a 75 or $80 ride. He didn't charge me anything. We just went on and had pizza with his paragliding buddies. Absolutely true story. Oh, and, and Carrie, was, my, was it five minutes, 11 seconds? Thank you. Oh, and also, Irene Nisi, the, the Greek word for peace is Irene. Nisi is a Greek word for island. So, I don't know, but, but it's kind of, kind of interesting because it, as, as, a story, as a story relates, the island was in kind of an earthquake turmoil. So, it, 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 it was not really all that peaceful when the adventurers left the island. So the story goes. Anyway, a little bit of a background. Thank you for the time to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, it is 747. So does anybody have any itching to take a roll next week? Go ahead, Ms. Carey. Very quickly, uh, thank you so much, Donovan, to share you the information. Actually, I knew that today is the day I saw the headline news. And then um, I, I like to say, uh, thank to we really thankfully you know meeting with you every week, and I got more aware of the uh the, the, the syndrome, and I really really appreciate it. I so I more pay attention since I you know, have a meeting with you, and um, definitely you 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 have what's the good word. You affect a lot of people. You gain the people's awareness. And thank you so much. And then um, whichever you look comfortable to pay, and it, it, that's fine. <laughs> I don't want to push you much. So that, that, thank you. Back to you. Thank you. Let's see. Who, who wants to do our Toastmaster for next week? Wes, I think it should be you. Will you be around next week? If I'm going to be an evaluator, I should be here for to do the meeting. Sure. Oh, I'll that's right. It. You're going to be an evaluator. Okay. You're going to be a Toastmaster and speech evaluator. I think you would do great. Okay. Let's see. Olivia, I will do table topics, Master. Let's get the easy ones out of the way. Grammarian, R counter, timer. I know somebody's itching to do something. Okay, well, no, no pressure. I would like to do a speech next week for my pathway on my evaluation and feedback. Donovan is going to give us a prepared speech. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. Carrie, just give me a thumbs up. I know you're on mute. Is David good? David's okay? Probably so. <laughs> yes. Okay. I just wanted to have you heard from him. Okay. I'll reach out to him and send him a little message and let him know that we we missed him and we were thinking about him. Okie dokie. Thank you very much. And one last thing. What about next Thursday, 5 30, 6 o'clock for our uh, 6 o'clock 
for our executive meeting. Next Thursday, which is the 20, let's see, yes. next Thursday is the 31st. Coming Thursday. Oops, I'm sorry. You mean this, this coming Thursday, right? Next Thursday, the 31st. At 31st, okay, so next week, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next week, I'm sorry. Donovan, your hand was raised? Yes, um, I was wondering, no, I can't commit to it just yet because I don't know my um, 